All right, awesome. So essentially today I'm going to go ahead and take that time and give you guys a diversity review. So you could, I'm going to put the link of this Google document in the YouTube description. So if you missed today's class, you can go ahead and check out what's up. Essentially, um, the study sheet does not emphasize as much uh, about bacteria as we did during class. However, that is okay. Um, this bacteria, they won't be as much on your test as you think. They are important stuff. However, we don't emphasize them a lot in grade 11 because we don't learn too much about them. And they just kind of show up in the diversity unit and then just doesn't show up never again. Perfect. Alright, so taxonomy. Taxonomy is a branch of science focused on naming and organizing living things into different categories. I'm sure we already know know that by now, and I hope we do. So binomial nomenclature, you're guaranteed to get a question on this. You don't know you don't need to know that Carl Linus introduced them. You don't need to know that, but you just need to know that we are called Homo sapiens and you just know you just need to know how these work like you don't want to pull up and just give me an answer and like hey you know what maybe i think this should be named that note i want you to give me an answer you're like this it's the genus the homo the homo is the genus part and the sapien is is the species part and then we're going to talk about tax taxonomic hier hierarchy so you need to know the order of this you need to know domain kingdom film class order family genus species i have a tip for you it's probably that on your test you're going to get a multiple choice like this so if you don't remember maybe you can flip on the back and see the multiple choice and then you can answer one of the short answer questions that really helps so the three main domains that we really looked at and really they're the only domains is bacteria archaea and eukarya eukarya so bacteria are single-celled prokaryotes and they're found almost everywhere and probably on your desk there's billions of them but you just can't see them archaea are similar to bacteria but however they thrive in extreme conditions like hot springs or super salty environments or extreme cold winters now eukary eukarya includes all life forms with complex cells animals plants fungi protists that includes us now species concept this is what happened what we did in the second class i believe so we looked at morphologically based on the physical traits like its size shape body and we can measure this ourselves if it's alive but however if it's not alive we can use fossils or anything that's buried in the ground that can be studied we can use those to study biologically we can look at them and whether what offspring they can produce that's what we are looking at in the entire biological concept it's literally all looking at offspring this however is only limited to asexual and fossil organisms because we can't just go ahead and go up to a person and be like hey um produce an offspring for me so i can see what's your type no it's it's unethical phylogenic it's we're using dna and i think this one is the most obvious one genetics you can see it right in the word so again i emphasize this every time morphologically you can just look biological you gotta go dig up some stuff and phylogenic you need some high technologies and then we looked at plants but that was that was not in the order we looked at we looked at hold up okay so protists aren't on this unfortunately but you're still gonna get tested on it so we'll go through plants first so plants are where we started with algae i remember that so algae is basically the link between protists and plants so we have brown algae they're marine we have red algae they're also marine however we have green algae they're more fresh water so this these two are both what I, well most people would consider an algae uh, sorry a protist and green algae is the only one that we would really consider as a plant because they have cellulose walls cell walls and they also do photosynthesis because they have chlorophyll surprising i know so yeah that is basically it for the algae part 
and then we have adaptations to land. They are seas. They protect and nourish embryos, embryos, and they have vascular tissue that transport water, nutrition up and down, which is basically viable, and it's the only thing allowing them to be able to grow that high. Now plants alternate between different stuff, all right? They alternate between gametophyte, gametophyte producing gametes, and sporophyte. They produce spores. So, I highly encourage you that to study for a plant, plant's life. Maybe draw out the entire life of a plant, maybe as a seed to an entire tree or some sort of stuff. Non-vascular plants. So, uh, non-vascular plants they don't have vascular tissue and they rely on osmosis and diffusion to push water up its stems. Examples of this could be mosses. They grow very low. They're found in bog and shaded areas and that's kind of it. Non-vascular plants is, isn't there isn't too much. All right. Seedless vascular plants. So, seedless vascular plants, we have whisk ferns and we have they are able to perform photosynthesis in stems and they are able to grow much higher than non-vascular plants. However, they have, because they have vascular tissues that can transfer um, transfer water and nutri nutri nutrients up the stem. Now, seed producing plants include gymnosperms and angiosperm. This is basically cones and this is basically flowers and seeds and fruits. However, there's one big important difference is monoco monocots and dicots. Monocot has a one seed leaf. They their leaf when you look at it and observe it, it's usually very well organized. And dicots they have a two seed leaf. But however, when you look at their leaf, it's usually not as well organized as a monocot. monocot. And again, we also have to talk about how they reproduce and how their seed is dispersed. Some flowers they attract pollinators because they're beautiful, or they have. Um, they could have pollen, or they could have sweet treats for bees and other stuff. And fruit, they also help seed dispersal, as we talked about. They could be eaten and it eventually be pooped out, even with some um, with poops being the sorry with poop helping it grow even faster. All right, so that's kind of it. Then we start. Animals, right? Yep, yeah, animals. So, animals are all eukaryotic cells. They're multicellular. They have no cell wall, and we can't make our, our food. So, we always sexual reproduce. Most animal animals do. Some produce eggs. Some doesn't. So, we produce embryos, and we have a backbone. Some of us we have backbone. Some of us don't. And you kind of need to know this. You kind of need to know how we classify these stuff. Some of us has body cavity segmentation and modes of reproduction. This is a very key important stuff. We got to know that we don't lay eggs around like birds do that, but humans don't. And then we got to learn about those without a backbone. That, from personally, the best thing that I can remember is worms. And arthropods, you gotta know this. You gotta know most of this. You gotta look over it. And things with backbones is much easier. Now, important processes and adaptations. Endosymbiosis is the evolutional theory explaining how originally the cells came from. So how did we? Ex how exactly did we have those multi-organelle, multi-organelle cells? So. We begin all from a prokaryotic cell with absolutely nothing. So I think for that question is pretty simple. You just got to use the mitochondria example or a chlorophyll example. Life cycles, you got to know alternation in, of generations in plants, haploid and diploid stages, symbiosis, relationships like mutualism and lichens, they are fungi and algae, and reproductive adaptations. Key terms, not much, and study tips, flashcards, all of that, you know, all these good stuff. Practice question. Compare and contrast each of the species con concepts. So this is this probably is on your test. So, um, Biologically, we're looking at fossils, we're looking at the offspring, and um, phylogenically, you're looking at genetics, and morphologically, you're just looking at looks. It's very, very simple, in my opinion. And then... 
how is uh, how is binomial nomenclature used well it's used in everyday life and we are using it basically to classify how things are called so we have multiple different sort of stuff so unfortunately humans we are homo sapiens i don't actually know that's pretty fortunate so there could be some other stuff similar to humans that could be called homo something else but all of that you know all right so i got the Got the plants here. Got the protists and fungi. Yep. All right. So protists are diverse group of eukaryotic organisms. Some of a plant-like, some animal-like, some fungus-like. So again, you just need to remember whatever we don't like, we just throw them in here. <laughs> Amoebas. Um, you can name an algae if you specify the color. You can get away with it in the plant-like. Fungus-like, you just talk about moles. And yeah they aren't too hard so and then fungi it's their decomposers some of them make their own food some of them don't so we can they can break down organic materials and you need to know their structure they have the filament and their reproductive organs all above the front above the ground they have mycelium which is above uh, the below the ground that's their network and we're gonna know all of these parasitic, predatory, mutualistic, saprobile. And you're gonna know how they reproduce, whether it's asexual or sexual fusion of hyphae or spore production. Yeah, this is not too bad. Alright, let's go back to the practice questions. So, what are different ways that organism can be classified? Oh, awesome. So, we, they can be classified based on their reproductive strategies, based on their looks based on the possible offspring and based on their ancestors so compare contrast different types of diversity well I, um i'm supposing you're going back to the first lesson for this so sure you could answer that you could talk about how there is um genetics gene diversity there is species diversity and all that you could be like environment there's different types of tro tropics around the world there's different type of biomes and species you could be like there's different types of animals and genetics is talking about the gene pool and the genetic variation along inside of a species three ways which virus different from prokaryotic and arcanic cells so viruses undergo a lytic process so bloom they have RNA which is invasive and um, they could they could lurk and a bunch of stuff pretty simple what are steps in each different viral life cycles you just gotta answer that man process of sim immunosymbiosis easy and streptococci you got an un you gotta understood what the rod and um, sphere naming is so for rod, it was, I'm pretty sure it was strepto. Hold up. <coughs> I'll pull it up so you guys can take a look at it. Okay. Oh, it's too far. Okay, so. Yeah, I can't find it. So strepto is basically in a chain. And then where's the other one? Gram positive complete. Staph low is a cluster. That's all you need to remember. It isn't too hard. Nothing much to remember. Overall it's pretty easy. And cockeyed that you just gotta know how you name them because you are guaranteed to have at least one question asking how you name them on the test. It's pretty simple, essentially, and you just gotta understand it. So, yeah, and you also need to know that we need to know the numbers. We need to know numerical, mono, tri, die, all of that. So, perfect. So the first one. So essentially, when they talk about gram positive, they want you to talk about the cell walls. Like, when when you are a gram negative and you're that pink color, you divide really quick because your cell walls is really thin. Now. They also want you to talk about the shape, of course. So strepto, streptococci. So strepto is um, 
what was it? It was chains, right? Yeah, chains, and then Kakai was round. And then the other one is Staphylobacilli, which is um clumps and um rod shaped, I believe. Yeah. Describe three characteristics of each kingdom. You just gonna you gotta know if they make their own food and you can go very specific. You can be like this has this can perform photosynthesis and um we have high IQs and all of that. It's very simple. And yeah, that's basically it for diversity. I will go over a practice test with you. So hopefully you can do better.